Hi, today I'm going to explain a South Korean disaster action comedy film called Exit. Lee Young Nam is a man in his early 30s who still lives with his parents. Back in his college days, he was the leader of the climbing group and had won gold in several tournaments. However, now, finding a job with this qualification has become a challenge. No matter where he applies, he is always rejected. Young Nam spends most of his days in the park, practicing parkour and acrobatics. He thinks it is cool, but the whole town regards him as a loser. Even his own nephew doesn't want to be around him. At home, things are even worse. Young Nam is treated like a kid by his parents and his elder sister alike. Although they love him a lot, they never miss an opportunity to scold him. Young Nam is heavily dependent on them, too. Despite being a grown man, his mother still makes his hair. One day, the family decides to celebrate his mom's 70th birthday. Since their house is too small to host a party, Young Nam is tasked with finding a venue. Without thinking twice, he immediately suggests the Cloud Garden, a three-star hotel located in the city. This is because Young Nam's college crush and fellow climbing member, Wee Ju, works there as the vice manager. The two used to be good friends back then, but it has been five years since they last spoke. Nothing makes you look hotter than rolling up saying, hey, it's my mom's birthday. In the next scene, Young Nam and his family get dressed and head to the venue. Once they reach it, Young Nam is swarmed by his distant family members, who mostly bombard him with uncomfortable questions about his work life. They also inquire if he has a girlfriend, but Young Nam simply ignores them. After a while, as the cake cutting ceremony is about to begin, Young Nam finally sees his crush, Wee Ju. When she notices him, he pretends to be shocked. Later, the two head to a silent area, where Wee Ju expresses her happiness to see him again. She inquires if he knew that she was working here, but Young Nam calls it coincidence. According to him, he selected the place because of its good reviews on Google, despite being over an hour drive away. When asked about what he does for a living, Young Nam lies, saying that he is the manager of a multi-million dollar company. Shortly after, Weiju is called by her manager, Mr. Gu, who at first praises her for her excellent work. But then, he starts hitting on her. Weiju is unsure of how to get rid of him, because the hotel belongs to his father. If she rejects him, she will probably get fired. Elsewhere, a large truck pulls up in the most crowded part of the city. The driver then gets out and opens several valves, which releases a mysterious gas in large amounts. Unfortunately, the gas turns out to be poisonous, and it starts affecting the people nearby. Soon, hundreds of people start collapsing on the ground, and some even die on the spot. When people try to flee the area, deadly road accidents ensue, turning the city into utter bedlam. Meanwhile, the people in Cloud Garden are still oblivious to whatever is happening at Side. They are seen dancing and celebrating with all their energy, giving mom piggybacks and stuff. Suddenly, a nearby accident launches a glass cylinder inside, which startles Yang Nam and the others. As they rush outside to check, they see the thick layer of gas approaching their way. Hundreds and thousands of people are fleeing the scene, making them realize that something deadly is coming. Hence, Weiju hurriedly escorts everyone inside the hotel. While everyone obliges, Yang Nam decides to stay, as his sister has just arrived in her car. He screams at her to get out immediately, but by the time she realizes what's happening, it is too late. The gas gets to her and she collapses, so Young Nam has to hold his breath and carry her inside. The sister somehow survives, but she is choking badly, and her entire body is covered with sores and rashes. Some of the family members try calling for an ambulance, but they are informed that at this point, only helicopters are functional. While everyone goes into a state of panic, Young Nam and Weiju peek through the glass window and witness the entire city covered in thick gas. They don't know what it is or where it came from, but what they do know is that the gas is rising, so they have to reach a higher altitude as fast as they can. Young Nam immediately approaches the others and informs them that they have to reach the terrace. They then make a makeshift stretcher for his injured sister and carry her upstairs. Unfortunately, when they reach the top, they learn that the door is locked. The only key to it is kept in the reception on the ground floor, but since that floor has already been covered with a poisonous gas, they will have to find another way. Shortly after, Weiju, Manager Gu, and a few others scavenge for supplies on the floor below them. There, the TV is functional, and a news channel is reporting about the mysterious gas. While the cause of it is still unknown, there are precautions to avoid exposure to it. The reporter states that one can use a gas mask, which will give them about 15 minutes of immunity if they breathe slowly. It is also 
also essential to cover the entire body to avoid blisters and rashes. After a while, three gas masks are found, and Manager Goo wants someone to use them and retrieve the key from downstairs. However, no one wants to risk their lives. Hence, with time running out, Young Nam thinks of another plan. He learns that the door to the terrace can be opened from the outside. Because Young Nam is extremely gifted in athletics and climbing, he decides to risk it all. In the next scene, he breaks a glass panel by throwing objects at it. Then, he ties a safety rope around him, turns to the camera, and says, Not the ex Han. This is for you. He takes a flying leap of faith, despite his family pleading with him to not do so. Fortunately, Young Nam manages to grab hold of a ledge and reach the opposite building. Seeing his determination, Weiji throws him some chalk powder and a carabiner so that he can climb more smoothly. Soon, Young Nam starts jumping from roof to roof like the Prince of Persia himself. All the while, his cousin live streams him on his phone so that his family can see what's happening. Meanwhile, Young Nam reaches a spot where he cannot grab onto the next ledge. This is because the rope around him is holding him back. So, he unhooks the rope, meaning that he is now on his own. If he slips, that will be it. Despite the dire circumstance, Young Nam slowly keeps on climbing. He finally reaches the last stage, where all he has to do is propel himself upwards and grab a lion head statue. At first, it appears as if he's going to slip, but then Young Nam uses every ounce of strength in his body and finally pulls himself up. Now, he is on the roof of the Cloud Garden. After resting for a few seconds, he gets up and opens the door, finally allowing his family in. Following this, the family tries their best to attract the attention of a nearby helicopter helicopter, but to no avail. Just then, Weiju comes up with an idea. She suggests that everyone form an H and tap their phones to give an SOS signal. They also start sounding out the SOS pattern to themselves. And all I can think about was this scene from the cable guy. <laughs> Meanwhile, the perpetrator, who is responsible for all this chaos, is finally exposed. It turns out that he is the co-founder of a large biotechnology company. He was also the head scientist, but one day, the other shareholders abruptly kicked him out. Because of this, the man went insane and started devising a plan to hurt the city. After many trials, he ended up with this poisonous gas. As of now, he is believed to be dead because of the same gas he exposed to the city. Back at the roof, the family has been tapping their phones for several minutes, but the Chopper still doesn't notice them. This makes Weiju realize that the lights in their mobile phones are simply too tiny to be noticed. Hence, she goes down one floor and flickers the large advertising signs of the hotel. The plan works, and the Chopper's attention is finally drawn. After a while, help arrives, and all the family members are loaded into a carrier one by one. However, when it's the turn of Yang Nam and Weiju, an alarm starts blaring, indicating that they have crossed the wait limit. Because of this, the two are forced to stay back and wait for the next Chopper to arrive. But, since the gas is approaching them at an alarming rate, Young Nam and Weiju decide to escape. At first, they gather the three gas masks they found earlier, and then stock as much rope as they can in their bags. Following this, they cover their entire body with plastic bags, and head to the streets in search of a safe place. After a bit of wandering around, they climb to the roof of a building, only to realize that the gas has already reached there. Panicked, the two rush back to the streets and finally reach a building which is still safe from the gas. It turns out to be a gym with lots of equipment in it. Young Nam and Weiju throw away their damaged masks, drink some water, and then get ready for their next plan. Since the building opposite to them is too far to jump, they will have to go there by rope. Soon, the two connect some dumbbells to the ropes and launch them across to the next building. Once they feel that it is firm and safe, Weiju decides to go first. Owing to her lighter weight, the task is a challenging one, but Weiju is a former climbing champion, so she crosses over to the next building without much fuss. When it is Yang Nam's turn, however. The smoke slowly starts reaching them. Time is running out, and death seems imminent. But Yang Nam uses the last bit of his strength and somehow makes it across. Meanwhile, the officials learn that water has the ability to dissipate the harmful smoke. They immediately start working on it, but eradicating the entire thing will take some days. On the other hand, Yang Nam's anxious father, Jang Su, reaches a safe place where he finds two reporters using a drone to cover the news. Realizing that this may be the only way to find his son, he pays 
pays them a handsome amount and asks them to inspect the area near Cloud Garden. Elsewhere, Yang Nam and Wee Ju reach a new building where several cutouts of humans are present. Suddenly, they notice a bunch of kids trapped in a nearby building pleading for help. They seem helpless as all the doors around them are closed. So, the couple decides to help them first. They use the cutouts and even themselves to make a large arrow that points towards the trapped children. Luckily, the plan works. A chopper notices the children and rescues them. Since the building appears to be tall and safe, Yang Nam and Wee Ju decide to wait for the next chopper, but just then, a nearby gas station explodes. This hurls the poisonous gas back in their direction, compelling them to flee again. Wee Ju notices a large crane tower nearby, and she suggests climbing it. Yang Nam doesn't like the idea, but since he doesn't have a better one, he agrees. In the next scene, the duo is again on the move. Surprisingly, the drone that Jiang Su had hired finds them. It follows them everywhere they go, and even live telecasts them. With this, the entire country watches the daring escape with excitement. Everybody lauds their bravery and valor. Just look at all these useless streamers pretending they have something to do with it. Yang Nam's mom also observes him jumping from building to building, and almost has a heart attack. Meanwhile, the duo reaches a tall building, which is the last one near the crane tower. The unfortunate thing is that the gap between them is too much. Now, with the poisonous gas approaching them at a rapid rate, death seems imminent. They even hug each other and bid their final goodbyes. They cry, which they do a lot in this movie. But, right then, a buzzing sound disturbs them. It is a swarm of drones that has arrived to their rescue. Tens of thousands of dollars worth of the damn things, doing something helpful for the first time since their owners got them. It turns out that after witnessing their daring escape on television, many citizens across the city have decided to help. This gives Yang Nam renewed hope, so he comes up with a plan. He instructs one of the drones to hook his rope on the opposite building pipe. After this, the two tie themselves with the other end of the rope and attempt to swing to the large tower. The plan fails miserably, and they end up hanging in the middle of nowhere. To make matters worse, the rope attached to the pipe also starts to loosen. This forces Weiju to come up with an abrupt decision, so she grabs pliers and cuts one end of the rope. The plan is to swing to the next building, but unfortunately, the rope on the other end disconnects. As the entire country watches on, the two plummet into the thick smoke, seemingly to their death. Everyone who is watching their stream is left in utter shock. Yang Nam's parents are devastated and they can't cannot stop crying. Even the rescue helicopter turns back, preparing to leave. But right then, the pilot notices a small flare being lit on the crane tower. On a closer inspection, he sees that Yang Nam and Wee Ju are still alive. They somehow made it to the tower and are hanging on for dear life. Wee Ju screams here and it made me laugh really hard. In the final scene, the two are rescued and brought back to safety, where Yang Nam finally reunites with his parents. As usual, they berate him for being reckless, but they are also proud of the bravery he showcased. Yang Nam even gets to give his mom a piggyback, just like he wanted at the party. Meanwhile, Wee Ju is alone when manager Gu comes near her and tries to flirt with her again. This time, she teaches him a lesson by punching him hard, right in the face. Get bent, Gu. In the final scene, Yang Nam approaches Wee Ju and returns her carabiner, but she insists he give it the next time they meet. Yang Nam just smiles as he realizes that she is interested in him. The movie ends as Mother Nature helps heal the city by unleashing a massive rainfall. Subscribe for more videos like this, turn on notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.